¿Ves? 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 Yosef was um, uh, privileged to bury his father, and none of his brothers were greater than he, as it is stated. And Joseph went up. Joseph went up. The, Joseph went up to bury his father, and he brought with him both chariots and horsemen, uh, who was treated with as much honor as Joseph, and none other than Moshe attended to him. Moshe was privileged to attend to the bones of Joseph, and there was none in Israel greater than him, as it is stated. And Moshe took the bones of Joseph with him. Who was treated with greater honor than Moshe, but none other than the Almighty attended to him, as it is stated in Devarim, and he buried him in the valley, and not of Moshe alone did they say, but also of all the righteous, as it is stated, um, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of Hashem shall gather you in. He brought her to a minka offering in an Egyptian basket and put it in her hand so as to tire her. All Minka offerings start and finish in service vessels, but this one starts in an Egyptian basket and finishes in service vessels. All Minka offerings require oil and frankincense, but this one requires neither oil nor frankincense, and all Minka offerings are with wheat, flour, and this one is a barley flour. The Minka offering of the Omer through a barley flour is a uh, sifted flour, but this one is of unsifted flour. Rabbi Gamil says, just as her deeds were like those of an animal, so too her offering is from the food of animals. He brought her a new earthenware cup and put half a log of water uh, from the kior into it. Rabbi Huda says a quarter of a log, just as he minimizes the amount of writing required, so too he minimizes the amount of water required. He entered the sanctuary and turned to his right, and where there was a spot one cubit by one cubit with a marble flagstone with a ring affixed in it, and when he raised it, he took dust from the beneath it. He added enough to be visible on the water, and as it is stated, and the Kohen shall take from the dust that will be on the tabernacle floor and add it to the water. Okay, story continues. Balo lichtovis amagila. So now it's time for him to to write the the, the scroll. Ma'ezim makom hu kosev. So he copies out literally the the text from the from the parish of the Sota that we have in the parish of Nasa. Okay, and uh, it might actually be helpful at this point if you have the, the text in front of you. Let me just quickly get that open. I should have done that before before right now. Uh, I don't know if you if you have a chumash in front of you. I will get one in one second. Okay. Okay. Um, oh wait, where are we? In, uh, what, do, what do you want? Which which commission you want? Okay, so it's uh, by the um, uh, Bamidbar. Okay, right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Bamidbar Perik Hay. Um, I, could, I couldn't hear you. Sure, which one? Bamidbar Perik Hay. Okay. Okay. Right, that right, right, okay. And then what? Uh, right, so then so then uh the atlas at the hand okay, that's per it's a peric yub test. That's a pass of yub test. Yub test. Okay. So you can so you see over there it says the spiel saha cohen the amarela isha in Rosha have ish or sah im lo statis uh two mam tahas is shaykh hinakimi me hamarim uh hamarim hale. So if you did nothing wrong, then uh, then you then you'll be exempted from this. Uh, you'll be immune to, from this uh, from this water, so from this water, water, right. water, right? The art kisa tis, but if you did tachas isheich ki v'chin etmeis v'yitain v'yitain ishik bach es shachov to me balade isheich. And if you have defiled yourself, etc., and carries on ishpia, okay. So then it, it gives you like a dot dot dot, a threat, sort of a threatening thing. So the, so returning to our Mishnah. We ask is the Maizim Akom who will So it says the Tanakama, be may im lo shachav ish nugome. If uh if nobody has if no man has has done anything, sorry, my the hand is not on me. Okay. Um right, so it may so so the Tanakama says it starts from the beginning of um im lo shachav ish. Which is the basically pasuk uh, yud ches? Um, no, pasuk um, yud ches. Yud ches. 
No, it, 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 it involves just have ish. No, it's a yud test. It is yud test. So, so basically, from, from the beginning, yud test. It says it says the time comes. But and of course, there is be a hakohen is aisha, and he doesn't write. And the woman must pasuk pasuk chafale. Is be a kohen is aisha. That's that's just that's just commentary. It's not what he what he actually. You don't have to quote him. Um, and, so you don't have to to um, mention what he what he does. You only have to mention what he says. Says the Tanakh. Uh, okay, because Yitain Hashem Osach Allah Belishua. Hashem should make you a curse and an oath. Ubau Hamayim Ma'arim Ha'elu, and then carry, it carries on. Ubau and these and these these bitter waters will come into you. Um, um, that's that again. Pasuk Tafesta, and may this water come into you. Uh, uh, um, causing the belly to the stain and the thigh to sag. But Eno Kose, and he doesn't have to write, but Amra Isha Amen Amen. That's the, what the, the end of the Pasuk is that the woman must say Amen Amen, because that's, uh, right. that's, that's not relevant to the, uh, to, to the curse. It's just, it, that's just Uvda, what, that's, that's what the, those are instructions. I thought, we did, yeah. I thought we did this one yesterday. No, we didn't. No. He didn't. No. Remember, Rabbi Yossi Yossi. Yossi. So, so Rabbi Yossi says no. He didn't. He didn't start. He wrote. He wrote the whole parasha verbatim, including the including the instructions of what he must do and what she must do. Rabbi Yehuda Amir, call Atmo Eno Kosef Ela Yitain Hashem Osach Allah Belishua. The only thing he needs to write is that Hashem should make you into a um, a, a, a curse and an imprecation among your people. That's it. So as we saw in the previous mission, it says Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Huda uh, minimizes the uh, the oil. He also min uh, minimizes the, um, the, the the words that are erased, as we saw in the previous mishnah. Okay. okay. So he says, let this, so he, wrote, he minimizes the words only in, in there, and he doesn't, unlike Tanakam, he doesn't include the instructions. Yeah. So we have a three-way machlokis about what uh, what words to write into the scroll that's going to be erased. Mishnah Dalad, ena kosev lo ala loach velo ala neyar velo ala dikra. So, what does he what does he write on? He may not write on um, a uh, what a, a loach is um, some sort. They call of, it a tablet here. A eh? tablet. Thank tablet. you. Tablet. Very good. Right. So no iPads. Velo um, ala neyar. And not on not on papyrus. Yeah, but not a la diphtera, and not on um, incomplete parchment. Diphtera is is uh, is 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 a, a, a not a not a fully pressed uh, pressed right. parchment. Ela ala magila must be on parchment. Shneimar besefer. Okay, the Torah says it's in a sefer. But any kosev lo bekomas velo bekonfantim velo bechol davashi roshen, and you may not write with um, uh, all these different types of of, of things. So you, you you've got the right, the right translations for me. So save me the trouble, please. Okay. Um, it says uh, I, 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 you cannot write on a tablet or a papyrus or an unprocessed skin, but only on a scroll, as it is stated in a book. And he may not write uh, may not write with gum, gum. vitriol, or with vitriol. substance that leaves a mark. Right, any substance that leaves a mark. So now that's that's actually an important point. Is that it mustn't leave a stain. I don't know if you've ever seen on a uh, um, on a on a safer tour or whatever when they need to make a correction, they can actually come with a a little blade and scrape off the, the ink and it just flakes off and it leaves nothing behind. Nothing behind, right? Okay, so it must literally flake off and uh, and not uh, and not do anything else. Okay. Right. Um, Right, so if it, so if it's, if it but leaves a permanent mark on it, that's not uh, that's not going to be erased because he's, he's got to be able to erase it. Ela it must be done with ink. umacha, he's going to have to erase it. Kasavshi, I call him some handwriting that may be erased. Um, now, a, a little interesting digression of the cow. We 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 going into the numbers of what is it that she's saying when the woman says amen amen to the. Uh, to the curses, because it says the, the you know, this is what she must say. Amen, amen. Two amens. What right. is she saying? Amen to over here uh, is the what is the Mishnah's question. So we have, uh, as usual, the Machlokes. Um, amen al hala, amen al shvua. Okay, she says yes. I agree to the uh, to the to the curse, and yes, I agree to the oath. Uh, saying that I am um, um, 
That's yes, I, it's saying yes, I'm innocent, yes, I agree to this curse. Furthermore, a man may ish there, a man may ish affair. Ah, so now we're introducing the concept of Gilgul Shua. It's, it's not just saying about this man. What if, uh, what if she, meanwhile, she was innocent from this guy, but meanwhile, she'd had an affair with somebody else without her husband knowing it. Okay, so that's also going to, uh, to affect her over here. That she's that he's he's not just during her and saying was it did you have an affair with this man? He says I did not have an affair with this man. Right. <laughs> but the guy standing next to him. <laughs> no 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 no. This is Amen Amen. Did you have have you had relations with any man other than your husband? So now without this guy she wouldn't have been she, he wouldn't have been able to make her swear. But since she's been having to swear in this guy she's now he, he's now able to be Magal Del Shavua on every man. Yeah. Um, and, and furthermore, this is now, um, uh, she, she also says that uh, she also swears that, uh, that she didn't have uh, any relations with her, whether she was betrothed or married. So even before she came into his house, this is uh, this, um, this, this Shavu is coming in. And an interesting one over here is Shomeris Yavamuk Nusa. Or, or if this is now the, a marriage from from Yibum, um, then she then she he also rolls in uh, the time before in between her her previous husband's death and her and and, and uh, being married to her to his brother. Now that actually is a little controversial because that's only the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Remember, Rabbi Akiva's got a got a different shita with Arias. He's a lot more machmir with a, with a lot of these uh, with a lot of these things of Arias and and creates uh, you know kares out of uh, any anything that's that's aser. So he says that this that he can also be Miguel Gil Shua um, onto the onto her, her waiting stage before the before the oven. Whereas Chachamim disagree with with the Rabbi Akiva, and that, that's actually not the that's actually not the halacha. That uh, that the uh, Yavam who had an affair. Is uh, is not actually asked to the to the Avam. She can still she can still marry him. It's not considered a it's not considered an arise. I mean, it's not considered. It's not it's not in Isra Karis. It's an Isra of Yavam and Ashuk, which is a Stam love. So so actually, this would not uh, according to Chachamim, this would not be uh, rolled into the Shua. Okay, carrying on with all the amens. Amen, shelo nitmesi, the im nitmesi, yavo obi. And um, I, I amen that I did not become tame. And if I did become tame, then these waters should uh, should come into me, and I accept the I accept the punishment if I'm lying. Rabbi Meir adds on another another thing. He says, Amen, shelo nitmesi, amen, shelo etame. He says. This is also an, an, um, an undertaking for the future. That she now has a sword of Damocles over her head. That once she's drunk this water, if she commits adultery in the future, then the water is just sitting there waiting to, to punish her. So, so it's, a, it's an amen to that as well, uh, which of course the Chachamim disagree with that it can only be bodek what's in the past, it cannot help you with what's in the future. Okay. Okay. I have a question about word here. Um, yeah. the, the word the word for tablet, uh, when we they, they call it luach. But luach, when we I think of a luach, I always think of the chart, you know, the chart with the um, you know, the times and the the, 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 the bottom and all that. But they here they call that a luach is yeah, a luach is, is a, it's a it's a tablet, you know, luchot shnei luchot habrit, right? Imagine you know, the picture of Moshe carrying the, the luchot. Right, right, right. That's a luach. Okay, all right. And Hebrew has many different meanings for one word. <laughs> okay. All right. We're on to um, oh no, we have Yud. Yud. I'm sorry. Nazir Yud. 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 And there we go. Uh, if he shaved his head following the sacrifice and it was found to be invalid, his shaving is invalid, and his sacrifice do not count for him. If he shaved after a sin offering which was slaughtered, not for his designated purposes, and then he brought his offerings for, for their designated purpose, 
his shaving is invalid and his sacrifices do not count for him. If he shaved after the burnt offering or after the peace offering, which was slaughtered, not for the designated purpose, and that he brought his offering for the designated purpose, his shaving is invalid and his sacrifices do not count for him. Rabbi Shimon says the sacrifice does not count for him, but the other sacrifices do count for him. If he shaved after all of these and one of them was found to be valid, the shaving is invalid and he brings uh, the other sacrifices. Someone for whom one of the bloods had been thrown and he then became Tomei, Rabbi Eliezer says he forfeits all. But the sages say he, he should uh, bring the rest of the offerings and become Tahor. They said to him, it happened with Miriam the Tarmadite that one of the bloods had been thrown for her and they came and told her about her daughter who was in danger. She went and found that she had died and the Pivaman said she should bring the rest of her offerings and become Tahor. And a Kohen Gadol and a Nazir may not become a Tomei from contact with their relatives, but they may become a Tomei with an abandoned corpse. If they were traveling on the way and they found an abandoned corpse, Rabbi Eliezer says the Kohen Gadol should become Tomei, but the Nazir should not become Tomei. But they could come and say the Nazir should become Tomei, but the Kohen Gadol should not become Tomei. Rabbi Eliezer says to them, the Kohen should become Tomei since he does not bring a sacrifice for his tumor, but the Nazir should not become Tomei since he brings a sacrifice for his tumor. They said to him, the Nazir should become Tommy, uh, Tommy, and since the sanctity is not everlasting, but the Kohen should not become Tommy since his sanctity is everlasting. Okay, uh, Zion, Zion Dalit. Someone who makes an end of prohibiting a house is permitted the upper story. These are the words of Rev Mayer. The Kohen, however, say the upper story is included in the term house. One who makes a netter prohibiting from the upper floor is permitted the house. One who makes a netter prohibiting a bed is permitted the footstool. These are the words of Reb Meir. The concomitant, however, say a footstool is included in the term bed. One who makes a netter prohibiting a footstool is, permit, is permitted the bed. And one who makes a netter prohibiting a city is permitted to enter the tachum of the city. But it's forbidden to enter the extension. But one who makes a netter prohibiting a house is forbidden from the doorframe and inward. If a person says, koanam these fruits to me, may they be koanam from my mouth. For may they be koanam from my mouth is it forbidden whatever is in exchange for them. And whatever grows from them, with respect to my eating or with respect to my tasting, he is permitted whatever is received in exchange for them and whatever grows from them. If it is a thing which seeds, whose seeds decomposes, but for a thing whose seeds is not decomposed, even what is grown from what is was grown is forbidden. And one who says to his wife, Kohanim, your handiwork to me, they are Kohanim from my, from my mouth. Or well, they are Kohanim to my mouth. He is forbidden whatever is received in exchange for them and whatever grows from them. With respect to my eating, respect to my tasting, he is permitted whatever is received in exchange for them and whatever grows from them. And if a thing who sees uh, opposes... Oh, wait a second, am I... Which, which, the two, Mishnah Babbitt and Mishnah Zion are actually pretty... Similar, but you're talking about is your Zion. This is where the one who speaks to his wife. This is Zion Zion. Uh, okay, no, that's that's for tomorrow. Okay, so we can we can leave that. Uh, let me just use uh, sorry. okay. Okay, you buy my skimmo gimmo. If one of them was forbidden to one brother by the Arab uh, prohibition, and the second one was forbidden to the other brother by the Arab prohibition, the one forbidden to this brother is permitted to the other brother, while the one forbidden to that brother is permitted to this brother. This is what's meant by the statement, her sister is her fellow Yavama, and she may perform a chalitzo or be taken in Yibo. If there were three brothers, and two of them were married to two sisters, or to two a woman and her daughter, or to a daughter's daughter, or a son's daughter, they require chalitzo, but may not be taken in Yibo. Reb Shimon, however, releases them. If one of them was forbidden to him by the era prohibition, he's forbidden to her but permitted to her sister. If it was a prohibition by commandment or commandment of sanctity that, that she requires katzlita, but may not be taken in Yubo. If there were three brothers and two of them were married to two sisters, while well, one was unmarried, if the husband of one of them, the sisters died, and the unmarried one performed mama with her, and then his second brother died, Beis says his wife remains with him, or the other is in charge as his wife's sister. But Beis says he must send away his wife with both the divorce and Kalutza, and his brother's wife with Kalitza, Kalitza, I meant, and his brother's wife with Kalitza. Um, about this, it was said, woe, to, woe unto him concerning his wife, and his woe unto him concerning his brother's wife. If there were three brothers, that was it. Okay. 
there's something about this this uh, this whole thing with uh, Yovamos. It sounds a little strange. Some of the things that uh, you know, I just <laughs> you get my meaning. You know, this brother with sister, and this sister with that brother. This and that, you know, just. Well, I mean, the, the fact that you've got brothers married to sisters is not that uncommon. Um, today? Yeah. I, I, really? mean, I, I know one case, absolutely, of, of two brothers are married to sisters. Yeah, absolutely. Not their sisters? Huh? Their sisters? They're not their own sisters, no. Two That's brothers, what I That's two what brothers I meant. who married to two, two women who were sisters. So I, know two, so I, I know of two identical men who, died, died, who, who married two identical sisters, you know, identical really? twins. Yeah, what you heard about it, I read about it, it was like really that's got to be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bakurim, um, uh, give old Dalit. The flute played before them when they, well, they until they reached the Temple uh, Mount. When they reached the Temple Mount, even King Agrippa would take the basket on his shoulder and enter until he reached the Temple Court. When he reached the Temple Court, the Levites intoned the song, I will extol you, O Lord, if you have raised me up and have not allowed my enemies to rejoice over you. The pigeons, which were on the baskets, were burnt offerings. So what they had in their hand, they gave to the priest. Um, but that's it, right? Okay. And uh, right, yeah. While the basket, uh, while the basket was um, still on his shoulder, he would read from "I profess this day to the Lord your God" until the end of the passage. Rabbi Huda says, "Until a wandering Aramean was my father. When he reached a wandering Aramean with my father, he took down the basket from his shoulder." held it by its rim, and the priest placed his hand underneath it and waved it and read from it. Uh, uh, wandering, I remained with my father until the end of the passage and placed it on the side of the altar and prostrated himself and went out. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, dollar test. Oh, no, Zion, Zion test. As someone had his... his had his water on his shoulder and it issued a ruling or he showed the way to others or killed a snake or a scorpion or he took food to store it and he was disqualified. If he took food in order to eat, the water is valid. If the snake or scorpion were obstructing him, it is valid. Said Yehuda, this is the rule. With anything that is considered a different activity, whether he stops or does not stop, is disqualified with something that is not considered a different activity. If he stops, it is disqualified, and, but, but, but if he does not stop, it is valid. If one entrusts uh, his water to a Tommy person, it's invalid. But if he entrusted it to a not Tahoe person, it is valid. But Eliezer says, even if he, entrust, he entrusted it to a Tommy person, it is valid if the owner does not perform a different activity. If two were filling their barrels for contest water and they helped each other lift their barrels or remove the thorn from one another, and one sanctifies that one sanctification, it is valid. For two sanctification, it is disqualified. Rob Yossi says, even with two sanctifications, stipulated. One more. Well, I lost you. I lost you there for a second. But uh, but basically, if they if they had a deal between them that each one was going to help the other, then uh, hang on. Can you hear me? Is this me? Yeah. 